guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a review of the Christian Dior book tote. If you do like these sort of videos, which includes luxury hauls, luxury unboxings and reviews, then please hit that subscribe button below. Okay, let's get into today's video. Okay, so I've wiggled myself over so we can fit this beautiful bag in view. So as you know, as per the title, this is the Christian Dior book tote. And this particular one is in oblique canvas in the Bordeaux. So it's essentially a deep, very red. Now, when you first get this bag, you are going to receive a ginormous shopping bag, a huge dust bag, Inside the bag, you'll actually get these ginormous cardboard frames, I suppose. Unfortunately, I didn't receive a box with this bag, which is understandable because it is quite a big bag. When it comes to the retail price of this bag, in Australia, it costs $3,800 for any of the um, canvas oblique styles. It previously was $3,400. The last I know was back um, in September, to about mid-September. And then before that, I uh, think in May, it was around about 2,800. In Europe, the price of this is 2,100 euro for again, the oblique canvas. And in the US, the last I know um, as of five weeks ago was 2,700 USD in again, the oblique canvas. There is a big variety when it comes to the canvas prints of the book tote. Most of those ones that are a little bit more expensive are seasonal and limited edition, so are harder to get your hands on and may no longer be available. However, the oblique style is now actually permanent line, so you will find it in stores quite, I wouldn't say necessarily regularly because it is um, quite a hot item, so they are in regularly but they're sold quite quickly. I do know at the moment there are resale sites that are selling this bag if you're wanting to get it quite soon. Uh, I know Luxury Next Season is selling them. Uh, you can find them also on the Facebook groups as well. Um, but you are expected to pay a premium if you are looking to get the bag quite quickly and buying it from a reseller or you know, buying it from the secondary market essentially. Pre-loved is holding its value. So I've seen that these bags pre-loved are actually selling for the same price as retail, if not still slightly more than retail. In my situation, when it comes to buying this bag, I bought it uh, at the very beginning of October. Unfortunately, I bought it right when the price went up to 3,800, which was pretty disappointing because I'd only missed out by literally about five days from the old price. In Sydney, it is a waitlist item. You do have to put down a deposit to be able to get the bag and you could be waiting at least you know, three months, depending on what color you've requested. The most requested one is navy. So in my situation, my sales associate was able to get me one off the waitlist, which was fantastic. However, when it comes to waitlist, when you do put a deposit down or pay in full for the bag, you're pretty much going to get the bag quite quickly. Whereas in Sydney, it's not necessarily the case. But, you know, all situations do vary and you never know, you might get lucky, you might pay for the bag in full and then you might get a call within a week that it's become available. I want to confess an honest truth when it comes to this bag. When I first bought this bag, I was in two minds about it. Originally, I declined and said, no, I'm not going to get it. I want to get the saddle bag first. And then um, my sales associate kept it on hold for me for the next couple hours. I think she knows how I am. I can be indecisive sometimes. And um, I did end up changing my mind. So. The reasons that I had originally um, first thought, no, maybe I should pass, um, firstly was I had been too overly indulgent this year already. The other reason that I sort of thought um, perhaps, perhaps I shouldn't was I was concerned that maybe it could just be an it bag and it would fizzle out. Then what made me change my mind was the practicality of this bag. It's a tote bag, yes, and it absolutely fits a buttload. It fits a lot. And I'm a mum of a daughter who's a toddler. She's just under two, almost two actually. And sometimes you need to carry a lot of their things. So, you know, you got bottles, nappies, change of clothes, toys, teddy bears, you know, all that jazz. So I knew that it would actually be really quite useful for my lifestyle. Uh, another reason is it's an artwork. It's a piece of art. It's, there's nothing like it. The only other bag that Similar in shape in the market at the moment, I would say, is the Fendi shopping tote, but that's made of a canvas. It looks a bit glossy and plasticky in my opinion. I don't really find it to be, in my opinion, it's not a 
fabulous work of art. You know, the Fendi shopping tote is a nice work of art, but it doesn't really scream that it's fabulous and unique and eye-catching. Maybe eye-catching for the wrong reasons, because some people might look and go, ooh, what is that bag? Whereas this bag, I feel like it's eye-catching for all the right reasons. It looks like a work of art. Like the detail on the canvas, print at the front saying Christian Dior, the structure of the bag. So I feel quite passionately when I'm saying that, that I feel that this is a fabulous work of art. So whenever I look at it, it makes me happy, it makes me smile, and whenever I carry it, I just, I get joy from it. I just look at it and go, wow, this is, the detail in this is just fabulous, you know? I don't have anything like it, and there's nothing like it. So, yeah, me feeling that passionately about it was really a big reason as to why I ended up going for it. I did at one point consider selling the bag, purely because I had buyer's remorse because the saddle bag was um, originally on my list which is just over there and that was coming as well I pretty much got a, a week later it became available in stock in Italy and my personal shopper was able to get it for me so I had buyer's remorse that I'd spent too much money um, in the past six months so yeah maybe I should let this go and I could always get it again later because it's a permanent bag but then I felt like I would just miss it too much like looking at it what it does, like it, what it offers for my collection, having nothing like it that fits absolutely everything. So yeah, I ended up changing my mind and decided not to sell it. Okay, let's run through the specs of this bag. So along here is 41.5 centimeters. The height is 32 centimeters. And the, the depth, gosh, this is such a big bag. The depth of the bag is five centimeters this way. So these are the specs that I found on the Europe website. The bag weight, I actually did weigh it on a postage scale, and it's 0.9 kilos, so 900 grams, which isn't really that heavy, like, it's just under a kilo. I don't find it too heavy, yeah, I don't find it, well, as is, I don't find it heavy, I don't really notice the weight all too much, it is relatively quite light, I suppose that's because it is made from canvas. So as you know, this is the oblique canvas. It is a fully canvas bag. There's absolutely no leather inside this bag. It's all canvas. The handles are a rolled handle and it is a rolled handle with the oblate canvas over the top of each handle. The sides are stitched like a, um, I'll say I relate it to like a um, Hermes Kelly Cellier when the actual the, the stitching of the bag is on the outside, so it's not being turned inside out. You can actually see the structure of the bag. On the bottom is also still the oblique canvas. There is no feet. Let's talk about the cons of this bag. So, as you know, it is a canvas bag, and it is relatively expensive for a canvas bag because you could buy a Louis Vuitton Neverfull GM, which pretty much is the same size as this, uh, for 1,900 Australian, which works out to be exactly 50% less of the price of this bag in Australian retail. It is hand and shoulder carry. However, because these are rolled canvas handles, they aren't exactly the most comfortable for carrying on the shoulder. When the bag is light like this with absolute, absolutely nothing in it, I don't have any problems carrying it on the shoulder. When I fill it up a little bit, it's still okay. I can still carry it on the shoulder. However, if I fill it up, you know, with a substantial amount of items, not full to the brim, but a substantial amount, let's say if it came up to about here and the, what I was carrying, it becomes more, un more uncomfortable to carry on the shoulder because it's got more weight to the bag and these handles aren't leather, they don't mould, they don't stretch, they just sit on your shoulder slightly un or uncomfortably. Also, carrying this bag in public in crowded places can be quite awkward as well, even if you're hand carrying it, it's quite big, you can kind of knock people on the corners of the bag because it's got like this pointed edge, and even carrying it on the shoulder in crowds can be quite awkward as well. This inside of the bag also has absolutely no way of closing it, so if you are in a crowded area there is a security risk. Um, if you're on trains and you're not paying attention to your bag or you fall asleep, or I mean, or if you fall asleep, anyone's at risk. But, you know, it, it's quite easy for someone to sort of get into the bag if you're not paying enough attention. However, the bag is quite deep, so for someone to get into the bag and you not to notice, you would pretty much have to be completely not paying attention whatsoever or have fallen asleep for someone to get right into the bag. The other thing is general wear and tear with this bag because it is a canvas bag. It's not leather. You can sort of get pulled on the actual bag, so... I think this actually was a lot with the bag when I got it. I'm not quite sure if this is going to show up. If not, I'll include a picture. But there's like these little fluff 
pores where it's got caught on something it's not really obviously noticeable and the bag's already got texture in itself anyway so but yeah that's one of the things I did notice with wear and tear it's got these little pools where it might have gotten caught on something and even like with your nails say if you've got like a sharp nail or sharp edge or something it can get caught particularly more so in these areas than on this because this is quite the way that this has been done is less looks less delicate yet yeah, that part but this is where it could potentially get caught on and that's why it has um, those pools those little tiny pools on the back also with um, with corner wear on a canvas bag I suppose it would be harder to sort of touch it up um, being canvas it's not like a leather bag where you could just color touch it up this I don't know how after sales would sort of care for any kind of corner wear I don't have any at the moment though but it could I mean it might happen eventually so that's how it looks after about a month of using it but not continuously so the edging sort of still looks fine I can't see any problems with the edging the only thing I've noticed is that kind of fluffing and even here on the edge it's got some sort of fluffing just there maybe from rubbing so it's really only this strip that runs all the way around that's quite prone to showing wear on the bag with those kind of those wear and tear marks I don't really see them to be that major and that that big of a deal. However, I am interested to know how, um, if you needed to spa the bag, because Dior does offer after sales service, if you were to send it to them for repairs, I'm wondering how they would go about it. I don't, don't know if this bag would be such an easy bag when it comes to refurbishing, just because it purely, I suppose, because it's canvas and you couldn't really just paint it to touch things up like you can with leather bags. So I guess time will tell. Um, I wouldn't say to baby the bag. I don't feel like this needs babying. It feels quite feels quite sturdy. It just doesn't seem like it's delicate in any way. It's like the embroidery feels tough and durable. So yeah, even with those things in mind to be wear and tear, I don't feel that it needs babying at all. And I won't be babying this bag. I'll be enjoying it and using it as you would use a tote bag. Okay, so we've addressed the cons. Let's move on to the pros of this bag. So the pro of this bag is it's such a big size that it'd be fabulous for travel. This bag, I believe, would nest a well, given the size is 42 centimeters along here, I think it would even nest a Birkin 35 inside the bag. So if you even wanted this bag for um, nesting your Birkin to carry on a plane, this would be fantastic. So yeah, it would easily fit bags inside for nesting. Um, it would fit um, a sub substantial amount of items. However, I would be cautious of filling it up too much if you are going to take it on a plane because generally on planes you need to care put it under the seat. And I wouldn't put this bag on the top cargo uh, on the top overhead cargo hold just because it has absolutely no way of securing it. If you're going to be carrying it in a car for traveling or train, then feel free to fill it up all the way. And what I also really love about it is that you could be dressed in sweatpants, a sweatshirt, you know, really daggy, but when you carry this bag, it just elevates your outfit. And when you're spending thousands of dollars on a bag, you want it to really elevate your outfit. When it, can, when it can elevate your outfit so much that you can dress like absolute crap, but then wearing and carrying this bag just brings the outfit to a whole another level, just really speaks volumes for the design and um, artwork of this bag. And you see it even on Instagram with the bloggers, you know, with the way that they're carrying it when they're going traveling, it just looks absolutely fabulous. And even for myself, whenever I use this bag, I, I feel fabulous carrying it. So to me, that's a huge pro when it comes to whether or not you're thinking of buying this bag. Okay, let's move on to the portion of what fits in this bag. So let's just say for, you know, for comparison's sake, we're not packing this bag to go, go traveling for a holiday getaway and go by car. Obviously, we'll just fit a crap load of clothes in there. We know that. But let's just say for the average person on an average day, for example, if you're going to the gym, water bottle, uh, pouch with say, you know, mints, medicine, lip gloss, that sort of thing. That goes in the bag, no worries. Your keys. Uh, flip flops, four in the shower. Phone. Coin purse. Card wallet. And let's just say, for example, this is a change of clothes, but it's a scarf. And let's say, for example, this coat is your towel. Imagination here, guys. And that would be a very big towel anyway. So as you can see, that all fits in no problem whatsoever. Let's say you're a university college student. Drink bottle. 
card holder, keys, coin purse, phone, pouch with your medicine and lip gloss and mints, a extra bag for say if you needed to carry, I don't know, something else, just an extra shopping bag, uh, textbooks, textbooks, two of them, Inside the bag, MacBook Air 13 inch, put that inside the bag, iPad large size or tablet, whatever, uh, pencil case, and also a notebook too. For example, you wanted to put the thongs in, you could easily put that in the bag as well, there's still plenty of space in it. Obviously now it is really heavy, like this is really heavy. So carrying it by hand is really the only option. I wouldn't carry it on the shoulder. It'd just be way too heavy. And moving on to another example. Let's say you're using this bag for work. You're an office worker or real estate agent, who knows what I'm using it for work. Card holder, keys, phone, couch, coin purse, drink bottle, extra shopping bag for whatever bag full of makeup so you could do your makeup on the train in the car not advisable do it when you get to work also not advisable but bag full of makeup notebook tablet macbook air 13 inch Let's say this is a pack of pens, even though it's a pack of textures. And let's say you had to bring your scarf as well. And for the sake of really filling up the bag, so that's with everything in there now that I've said, if you really wanted to fill up the bag, and let's say it's freezing cold, it's winter, you want to chuck in your teddy coat, you can. So that's the bag, super full. If you're going to work, it is not as heavy as if you're using this bag for university or college and you had textbooks. So the only real big weight is the, um, the laptop, I'd say, and well, drink bottle and maybe the notebook. And you could potentially get away with carrying it on the shoulder if you really needed to, but I wouldn't do it for a long period of time. Okay, that pretty much sums up all I have to say about the dual book too. However, if someone would ask me, should I buy this bag? You know, with all things aside financially and just a general question, should I buy this bag? I'd ask them, do you already have a tote in your collection that fulfills your needs of carrying everything in the kitchen sink? If they said yes, then perhaps you don't need this bag. However, do you have a bag in your collection that screams that it's a work of art, looks fabulous no matter what you're wearing when you carry it, and has the ability to carry all in the kitchen sink? If your answer is no, then perhaps this bag is the right thing for your collection. And perhaps it's the piece that you're missing in your collection. When it comes to bags, they are essentially all works of art in my opinion, but this one just really stands out amongst the crowd. I hope that this video was informative and I hope that I've covered all the bases when it comes to the Dior book tote. If you do have any questions, please leave them down below and I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you, bye. bye.